So I first got exposed to men's rights in London, England. Uh, I was a young, young guy, um, 18 years old, and I ran into a dude, uh, crazy, crazy Harry. And at the time, Crazy Harry was talking about his uh, family court situation. But it segued into that dude being interviewed uh, by the BBC. I think it was the BBC that interviewed him. And uh, this was in late 90s. This was in late 90s. And, um, you know, he, he was the first person who opened my eyes, even, even before the California guys started talking, uh, the two California guys, Lam and another guy, um, he was the first dude who got me to realizing that this thing that men do against other men on behalf of daughters, this thing that men do against other men on behalf of nieces is not so much of a women are doing this to us type of scenario. It's, it's these these um, these guys, they get into politics and put themselves around policy makers and they over overcorrect. And then these women come along and weaponize that overcorrection. So to the guys who are not looking at the totality of what's happening, they take a little sliver of the pie and say women, women, women. That's, that's not really the strength of anti-male rights. The strength of it is these guys who are passing laws on behalf of daughters. Nobody wants to see daughters hurt. Nobody wants to see nieces hurt. But the issue is all things being equal. And this is the conversation I got into with Crazy Harry at the time. As, as a young dude, all things being equal, well, the family court would not so much fall into that. And that gave birth to my men's right mentality. Yes, the family court system does segue somewhat into it. But like I argue with Crazy Harry at the time, you could get a lawyer to draw up pieces of paper that restrict her from doing X, that restrict her. You, be, before you even have sex, and then uh, another guy was with him and he was like well who would do that I said that's the point that's why back in the days guys used to just go to brothels or guys used to have a mistress or guys used to have now we believe in in ladies so much that we forget to protect ourselves and the reality is what I experienced later you don't even have to have sex with a woman. The laws that these guys are creating against against nephews and sons, a woman can just weaponize and say, hey, Jojo is the father. And the government will just attack without getting evidence, without getting... And even when the government finds out they were wrong, this is where the men's rights comes into play. Because all things being equal, the government should have tried to discover 
whether what she was saying was correct. And even when the government discovered that she weaponized them, the gov government should allow a civil case or something. And this is what I found out the difference between Britain and America. Britain allows you to sue the woman. This is another thing I argue with Crazy Harry about. When it, it allows you to sue the woman. Parliament allows that. America doesn't allow that. And that's where I think the difference is. Um, I think the policy of men's rights is really in the workforce and how crime is equally dispersed, how uh, uh, business and grants are equally dispersed, college. Uh, I, I believe it's a all things being equal. All things being equal is what is the strength of what men's rights is about. You should be able to go into any area any field freely without another man passing a policy to force you not to do it. You got to remember, I, I use this uh, because I'm in medical. I use this uh, uh, example all the time and, and I'm not a nurse. I'm not a nurse, but I use this nursing example before World War One. All nurses were guys. And and if not all, the great majority of nurses were guys before World War One. Those guys had to go become medics on the battle battlefield. Many a time those were not doctors, those were nurses or first years or things of that nature. Well, women had to identify themselves with that little hat that they used to have to wear. That's why they had to wear the hat to identify because there was a cultural shift happening. And so by World War II, you had ladies and guys, but after World War II, something strange happened. When those guys went off to war to be medics yet again, women put a lockdown, women weaponized the nursing industry and made it a woman's only thought process to the masses. You got to understand, most men, most men don't take the time to think about what's happening. Most men just react. That's, that's what make good warriors and so on and so forth. But just reacting makes you a blunt instrument. It makes you a tool. You have to be a little sigma. You got to step back and evaluate. Just because I'm a large tiger and I'm larger than this lion, I, didn't, I don't just leap out there. I evaluate to the left. I evaluate to the right. I even look up, look down. Now I make a decision. And my decision might just be to back away. It might not be that serious. With, with a Sigma mentality, you're, you're evaluating more often than not. Being alpha comes with a lot of brute type of logic or physicality. Sigmas, they allow, Sig, Sigmas play the number two field. You know, you allow number one to do its thing. It's less fights for me. You know, uh, you, you look at Planet of the Apes where, you know, even though some of the chimps are less, less physical than the gorillas, they give the gorillas their place. Yeah, go ahead out there and bust some heads. Do that. And the orangutans even more. Even more Sigma. Yeah, yeah, you guys go over here and do that. So I say all that to say this about men's rights. Men's rights is about those policies. It's about men recognizing men who are trying to create 
terrible scenario. So what I'm going to do more in men's rights is speak about how the shaming that other men do just because they're doing something another man isn't making money enough the way another man ain't making money. There's just too much <clears throat> pocket watching that a lot of dudes do. And, and, and it creates a terrible scenario for our nephews and sons. And then we blame the women when in actuality, the women are just weaponizing stuff that the childish beta dudes are creating. Because the childish beta dudes got to step back and say, hey, create that for your particular daughter. Don't put it out to the masses. Well, you don't want women to do this. No, I don't mind women doing X, Y, Z. Not with my wallet. That's, that's the only difference. And so when we talk about men's rights, we got to leave the race out of it. You got a lot of these guys, they come into men's rights spaces and they just bring all this skin, skin color war rhetoric and, and they try to bring their hate. It, it's just amazing to watch, man. I've, I've seen two, two Latino guys pretend to be white guys and just come in with all this black hate into a, a, a men's rights space. No, stop that, bro. Leave that at the door. This is a totally different topic we're talking about. We're talking about policy policy if your if your son wants to go make a million dollars selling wigs i don't have a right to make a policy against that dude i just need to say you know what that's not for me go do your thing but not make a policy against that dude the same way I shouldn't make a policy against a guy that wants to make firearms or make weapons. Go do your thing. You're not hurting nobody. You're not killing nobody. Go do your thing. The men's right is about policy. It's always been about policy. And the part of the family court that comes into play, like I said, is when all things being equal. When you have a kid you carry the sperm. You don't have to give it to this particular vagina. If you're having sex, you have to take precautions. That's not a men's rights situation. You want it to be a men's rights situation. I get it. But if you're a rich man, a wealthy man, a man that wants to protect his situation, that woman has to sign some piece of paperwork before she even gets the cock. And and a lot of dudes don't want to admit that. Now, I know you want to make it a men's rights situation, but as we've seen many a times, when you introduce the child situation into a men's rights discussion, the women weaponize it, and then it turns into 18 minutes of ping pong. Because it's, it's Smith versus Smith. Johnson versus Johnson. That's not so much of a men's rights issue. Now, you can argue, America compared to Russia, that the Russian men are passing policies to make sure fathers are 80% are in control of, of their children. And that Western people are not. You see how that's not so much of a men's right issue is the men are passing policy to make sure that the child is within the father and ink and, and uh, uh, America is not so much doing that. That's where the problem is. The same thing that happened here in California when we changed the law in 2005 that forces any woman who says that Tony is the father, you're not going to get no money until we get a DNA test on both of y'all. You ain't getting no money. That's, that's something we changed here in California. And we changed it in Tennessee because we gave some money, some California money to the Tennessee guys who were trying to get a change. 
and we gave some money to the uh, Chicago guys who were trying to get a change. People don't even know we California men's right people, we help do that. So this is this is the point, and this is why I'm putting my foot into this men's right thing because a lot of people don't know because some of the people at the top of the food chain are making it a less shame women moment. Nah, forget shaming women. That's a waste of time. Manosphere has showed you, shown you that shame, that shaming women is just a waste of time. What we have to do is policy, policy, policy. Hey, there is a, a, a car manufacturer. Do we have equal amount of women, equal amount of men? How did this department turn into a woman's only department? I'm just asking. Hey, uh, in this chemistry industry, do we have equal amount of men, equal amount of women? Because what you got to understand, a lot of things are not about merit. When it comes to the workforce, a lot of things are about favoritism and friends. It is not about who's the best candidate. Y'all got to stop that. It is not about that. You, I know people with eighth grade education who are better workers, better quality, better producers than people who got masters. There are people who got masters and degrees that will bump into the same wall, cut their hand in the manufacturing plant. I, I mean, so it's not comparable. I know you guys want it to be like that because the 1990 people trained you to want it to be like that, but it's never been like that. America was built on on the job training. The person who was educated sometimes could not even compete with the person who just knew their stuff. So it's a different conversation. But hey, let's have the discussion. I, I don't like people who hide in the shadows. Let's get together and have the discussion. So uh, once again, Men's right is about policy. And then when it's not about policy, it's about the politics. And I'm going to leave you with this one thing. Guy in Minnesota, assemblyman, assemblyman in, in Minnesota. He trying to use his assemblyman power on the hush hush because most of you guys don't pay attention to assemblyman. And he's trying to pass a law. He, he, he submitted it to uh, the Minnesota uh, Congress and he tried to pass a law that if a man is at a bar and a woman comes to the bar and they are buying their own drinks nobody's buying nobody's drink for nobody they're buying their own drinks she is buying her drinks, swallowing her drinks. He is buying his drinks, swallowing his drinks. This guy is trying to pass a law in Minnesota that if they decide to leave the bar and go upstairs and have sex, the man is responsible for how she feels afterwards. If she decides that, oh my God, what did I do? The way he tried to write his legislation is that the guy should have known he was intoxicated. This is the type of thing men's rights, all thing being equal. This is a perfect example. This is the type of thing that is men's rights. When, when people are writing bills like that, so that women can weaponize it. That's what a problem. It's the same thing I said about the whole Bill Cosby situation. She changed her story three times. She said some. She said one statement in Canada that was totally. And what's so funny in Canada, the pills were never mentioned. She she states in Canada she was doing a lot of drinking. By the time she came back to the states. That whole Canada thing was changed. Now pills were introduced and no mention of the drinking. See, you didn't know this. This is why I say 
I need to get into the to the MRA thing because I have a plethora of information. I don't I don't get into the emotional part of it. Then afterwards, she changed her story a third time to where now that's where these blue pills came into effect. But they admit there was no blue pills ever found. And she bought him a Valentine's Day after she quote unquote got violated. Mind you, you guys, you, you guys don't pay attention to the detail. This is men's rights. She bought him a Valentine's Day gift after. Now, if you're traumatized, why are you buying this guy a Valentine's Day gift? And then after the Valentine's Day gift, now this is weeks after she's been quote unquote traumatized. She asked the guy to get her, her and her mother tickets for his show in Michigan. This is when men's rights comes into play because now this lady's weaponizing something and we can't even get to the detail of any crime because we got a bunch of guys trying to help her hurt another guy. And then we sell it to the news, P.O. Cosby, and you're actually referring to something that happened in the 70s, not something that happened in 2004. 2003 2006 you, you're not referring to that so this is where men's rights comes into play is that we we really got to dig into the detail when we have these discussions and try to stay away from the family law because the family law just helps the other side make an argument you know men's rights is about policy it's about the workforce it's about all things being equal uh so come with me on this men's rights journey and uh, we're going to start doing some more of this. And again, what, what has messed up every men's rights movement is people bringing racism into the nonsense. You, you know, I don't know how many times I've had guys come into men's spaces with the whole race thing. It, it's just... Skin color is no place to be talking about policy as it relates to guys. All right, much love. Uh, if you want to donate, you can donate to the King of Classy on the Cash App. Or you can uh, holler at me through PayPal. Much love, and we'll be talking to you soon.